Hello, everyone joining us tonight. My name is Analu, and I am speaking with you from Brazil. I want to welcome all of you to our webinar focusing on the IT industry and how to succeed in the hiring process. I know we also have participants from all over the globe, so to get a scope, I will ask you to write here in the chat, which country are you typing from? Let's see. Okay, I see we have people from Brazil, right? Yes, I think we have people from all over. I see Colombia, I see, oh, tons of Mexico, Nicaragua, Peru, Venezuela. Oh, this is amazing, you guys, really nice. So um, before we start, I'd like to introduce myself and the other speakers from tonight. So I am Ana Luisa. Everyone here calls me Ana Lu, and representative here at Bytes Dev. Um, let's see about me. I love traveling, and I absolutely love to watch TV shows. And we will also be talking to Beatriz. Bea is a talent brand ambassador, and she will be presenting herself here um, later today. So. In today's webinar, um, we will start talking about our company's history and highlights, and then we will discuss more about our hiring process. After that, we will talk to our BDEVers about their experience with us and finish off with a session for questions and answers. So feel free to ask us questions during the presentation because some of them will be answered by the end of the webinar, okay? So, talking a little bit about Bytes Dev, about what we do. Bytes Dev was founded by Paula Zorin and Nacho De Marco in 2009 and is a leading nearshore technology solutions company that architects and engineers scalable high performing software solutions to meet the business challenges of our clients. As a remote first company, we specialize in solid end-to-end -end delivery of highly customized technology solutions designed by the top 1% IT talent, always ready to drive meaningful change with a strategic vision for the future. Um, here we create value throughout the journey by using our tech expertise to evolve digital transformation into digital acceleration because we are digital acceleration experts. We are a company powered by technology and driven by talent. So the results are here to show it. We currently have more than 4,000 people working with us from over 40 countries, providing services to empower Fortune 500 companies and other leading brands. We have clients like Google, like Rolls Royce, Pinterest, and many more. And together with them, we have been reimagining the tech landscape for over a decade. We have high aims, and our vision is to be recognized and trusted for employing the most talented professionals in the IT marketing and supporting our clients with their digital journeys. This dev runs on talent and our team evaluates over 1.2 million applicants every year to find and to train the most talented software engineers in Latin America. And just to give you an idea, here's a list with the different countries where we have active employees nowadays. So with the goal to harness the top 1% IT talent in Latin America, we knew that it would not be possible to concentrate these talents in a single city, nor even a single country, right? So the remote work environment was the only way Currently, our teams are distributed in 600 different cities from around 40 countries. Regarding technologies, although we work with almost any profile, we focus mainly on modern web development technologies, mobile and big data, and we have opportunities for roles not only in development, but in architecture, in leadership, and management. 
plenty of opportunities in areas such as marketing, um, human resources, business development, sales, among many others. So how could you join by this dev? I want to quickly share the main steps in our hiring process with you. So the first step is job applications. We receive over 1 million job applications per year. So this is the first step and the top 1% of candidates will make it through. Then on step two, we have online tests. Our systems will assign a pertinent set of eight to 12 online tests related to your role, from to your experience. And the third step is the HR interview. Here, we conduct interviews to evaluate your experience, your skills, your personality, cultural fit. And for step four, there are the written tests where we evaluate not only the results, but also the questions asked, the approaches that were taken, the level of detail applied in the resolution of every exercise we have. And then step five, we have the technical interviews. Here, we ask for specific questions related to the potential positions and projects in which you might participate here. After all that, you could become a BDEVR. You might become part of the team and on your way to a project perfectly matched with your profile. Now let's give you some insights on how to navigate these steps, okay? So for the first part, job applications. Before applying, make sure you have clear goals for your career. So perform some research on the area, you know, about the company and also prepare a good curriculum. Your CV is very important, guys. And with all that, you can go and on our applicants site, you need to complete a few things. Make sure to set up your profile, to be transparent about your skill set, about your experiences, your abilities, and also the career expectations that you have. And make sure to fill all of your contact information, okay? This is very important. It's our channel to talk to you. And assuming you completed your profile on the applicant site, what now? What do you do? So the next step is to complete the online tests that you have there. Um, for this part, you have to make sure that you choose a good space to perform the tests. So check if you have the appropriate hardware, if you have a stable network connection, and try to look for a place where you might not get interrupted. It's good to focus on your tests. Um, and make sure you will complete all the pending tests that we have there in the with your process. And now we will be looking for the best match for you. And when we find a good opportunity, we are the ones who will be contacting you for an interview. And there is no need to be anxious about this, about this step, about the interview, okay? Here's how you can prepare for it. Before the interview happens, try to understand the company, you know? Imagine if you see yourself in that space, in our company's culture. We call that a cultural fit, and it's very important to identify with the values, the objectives of the place you want to work at. You should also review and test the skills that you have, so take care of your problem-solving skills, take care of your time management. And during the interview itself, try to justify yourself, the things you say. So give a reason for your answers. Make a good display of your knowledge, of your skills, and also show us how your attitude is like when you are in the work environment. Take care of your personal appearance, but no need to be dressed very formal for the interviews, all right? Um, always make sure to read the instructions very carefully, be attentive, and ask questions too. Remember that the results here are not the only important thing. We do care a lot about your thought process. Now, after the interview, you may still have some written tests to complete. They are online tests as well, so repeat the same process. Find a good space for you to focus, appropriate hardware, appropriate connection, and make sure you learn from this process. There is always room for learning here. And the next step would be a technical interview. 
again, repeat that process, you know, check the network, check your devices, find a place without interruptions. And you can also try to find some good lighting for the interview. When you are there, focus on your interviewer, focus on the screen, the instructions, and at the end, review your performance. There's room for, for improvement there too. After all that, you could have become a bedever. So as you start here, make sure to make the most out of this experience as you start with us, okay? You will receive your project or a team assignment and you will start with our onboarding. So um, make sure you communicate very clearly. It's always good to take notes, you know, pay attention to the rules, to the norms, everything that we have inside the company and above all, Use this opportunity to network. Dev is a great place for it. You're going to meet a lot of great people. So as a BDEVR, you will have great work conditions. Most of our projects, they are full time. So the work time is from Monday to Friday, eight hours every day. We hire experienced teams, um, usually at least around five years of experience. But every now and then, we look for juniors, for trainees, even though most of our openings will be for semi-seniors or more, okay? So the remote jobs, they will always be remote. You will have to let your manager know about it before making a decision when it comes to relocation because, you know, time zones and locations, they do affect your job. But as long as that's okay, you can work from anywhere you want. That's great, right? Um, we pay a monthly salary for our employees that was previously defined, taking into account your results. And regarding English levels, we have different types of clients, those that need an advanced English and those for which it's not required, so it depends. The type of contract will be as a contractor, but they will have all the perks like paid vacation, sick leaves, English classes, and so forth. Now, I want to invite Beatriz, and she's going to invite some of our guests here to talk, because who would be better to talk about this process, about the work here, than our B-Devers, right, B? Oh, thank you, Analul. Thanks for the great job you did with the, the presentation so far. Um, I mean, as you mentioned, my name is Beatriz, but everyone here calls me B or Bea. I am also from Brazil, from Minas Gerais, and I've been working here at Bairesdev for a little over a year now. Um, it's been a great journey. I learned so many things uh, here. I did not came from a tech background, which is uh, something I would like to talk uh, to you um, about because I think we have plenty of different opportunities here at Bytes Dev for both technical and non-technical profiles. And I agree with everything Analu has said um, about meeting great people here. I had the opportunity to work and to meet and talk and with people from all over the world, which is crazy. I did not have this opportunity before on my previous jobs. Um, I think that's it for now, but I'll invite some extra special guests that will be uh, helping us uh, answering your questions and they will be telling a little about your uh, their experience here at Bytes Dev today. So uh, welcome Mateo and Giancarlo. I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you team. Uh, well, it's very nice to have everyone here. I'm super excited for this opportunity. And well, before Giancarlo, I just wanted to introduce myself as well. Um, so I'm Mateo Cabeñas and I'm from Ecuador. And I've been working here at Virostep for almost three years now. Okay, and currently I'm working as a recruiting manager. So uh, I've, I've been working in several types of profiles and inside several processes of recruiting in Virostep. So uh, I hope that uh, I can help solve all of your doubts and uh, about our recruiting process so that you can develop better. Welcome, everyone. Good that everyone? Uh, my name is Giancarlo. Um, I am here in Byers Dev around two years now. And first of all, thank you everyone for joining. And unlike Mateo, I'm I'm uh, a backend developer here. Um, I'm not a manager and i think that uh, we are going to to be able to to answer questions from both sides of the 
uh, aspects for the writing process because he's more familiar with the actual hiring and I more familiar with how things went, right? So I hope we can help you guys. Um, I would like to add something here. Um, Analu has mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we are going to host a Q&A session. So if you have any questions about the whole presentation, the topics and everything regarding our company, you can type those questions using the Q&A button. I see some people typing their questions on the chat, but the chat is harder for us to follow because there's a lot of people <laughs> talking at the same time there. Um, but we're going to try to answer everyone's questions. But before we, we go for the Q&A, I would like to uh, talk to our guests a little um, and explain uh, a little more about the company and the opportunities we have here. Um, as I mentioned, I don't come. I, I I don't come from a technical background. I used to work in the film industry before. Uh, I have a master's in cinema. Uh, I had a few experience with people management and communication before, and that's I think what got me uh, here at Bytes Dev. Um, but I want to know how did you guys ended up on the tech industry? How did it started? So please let me know. <laughs> And but I bet everyone's curious about it too. Well, probably mine is also kind of a twist as well, not as Giancarlo because he's very technical. But on my in my experience, I am a psychologist. Uh, I graduated university as a psychologist, and I have two areas of interest since I was studying in the university, which was the clinical psychology because we all love the clinical psychology part. But I was also very interested on the organizational psychology which is the human resources team, but also the talent team, right? Like how, how to evaluate candidates, how to interview candidates and move through the process. So uh, that's why just as I graduated as a general psychologist, I decided to apply because um, I, I saw the virus that was like a huge company and I was really interested in the multi multicultural environment. So that's why it caught my attention and I applied for any position in talent or in human resources where I could grow and learn because I didn't have any experience at all. And the opportunity came and I entered virus dev. And like I told you, I was working in several roles before inside talent, but I've had the opportunity to grow with the time and I'm still learning. So that's a little bit of of the of my experience of why I'm here and how did I get here? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I joined by this dev, I knew very much the basics about tech. I mean, software uh, programming languages. I would know like them by name. I know Java because it's the thing that says you need to update all the time in your computer. Uh, but basically, that was it before I joined. And I mean, I I still cannot code yet. Maybe that's a work in progress for the future, maybe. But I I am pretty glad that I got to like understand the tech industry and not only that, all the technical roles and aspects and tools we have. Um, Giancarlo probably will like correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I mean, he also joined the tech industry at some point and I would also like to hear from him. So yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm pretty lucky because I knew I, what I was going to do in my life ever since I was nine. So the first time that I got uh, my hands on a computer it was like I knew I knew this is what I'm going to do with, with my life. So I had I have been working on the in the industry for a long time now, um, but I have been working remotely only five years, almost six years. Uh, so I have been working remotely for a long time as well. But uh, but yes, uh, this is like one of the, those things that I was lucky. Not everyone is lucky to find what they want to do with their lives so so early, right? Yeah, I mean, lucky you because I mean, I went to a ton of different like areas and uh, things. I went to law school. I went to administ business administration school. I went to graphic design school. So. I mean, I think I found myself in this tech industry because I've always, um, I've always been really interested in tech. Tech to me, and I know it's cliche, but it's the present and it's the future. I think we are gonna uh, need uh, to understand it better for the future and to make it better to help us in our daily lives, in our like work routines. Um, I would like to to. Um, go into a, a subject that people always are really interested when we talk about Bytes Dev. It's because we've been working remotely here um, and it's all related to tech because a few years, um, like a decade ago, we started working remote. 
ever since we started, but it was not a common reality for most companies. Uh, I know with the pandemics for COVID, it started being more common for a lot of places, but that wouldn't be possible without technology and without like, um, without without the whole uh, way of work we do here. I would like to know, how do you feel about the remote work, how the remote work environment, how you deal with your colleagues on a daily routine here um, and how, I mean, do you manage to bond with them and have fun times because we uh, sometimes used to have that on an, in an office and now we don't have it anymore, maybe. So, yeah. So, well, in my case, at least, I don't have any office experience. So basically all my work experience has been remote. So I think that's also very good. Uh, like I was telling you, I just graduated and entered BioStaff. So all my experience has been remote working in BioStaff. And I think it has been a great, op I mean, a great opportunity uh, because you also develop yourself in organizing your things, right? I mean, you're not going to an office, but you need to be very organized with where are you working? What is the like the the place you're gonna be working or the schedule you're gonna be following? Not only to follow a schedule for the work, but also to follow a personal schedule. You know, like I mean, you need to try to have this balance of work life, and I think that remote work gives you that, right? I mean, I I'm very I'm very happy with this and very grateful with remote work because I I am able to finish work and being home. So I don't have to go through traffic or something like oh, that. Yeah. I mean, I am really helpful for that. I'm really grateful for that. Um, so all my experience is remote and it has been a great experience. Communication is very fluent because we have lots of channels to communicate with the team all day. So that's also very, very good. Um, and that's what I can tell you about my experience, at least all of it. Oh, yeah, amazing. How about you, Giancarlo? Have you always been working remotely? No, no. Uh, yeah, I worked a lot on on offices and i can tell you this uh since i worked on other remote companies as well i can say confidently that there is a difference even even when you are working remotely because the culture of the company itself makes a difference i never felt so included in a company like i have felt here in virus because not only the 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 how can i say this the the tools that are provided are great but uh, also the the people uh, because because in other places that I worked remotely, I never felt like this connection as I feel here. So yeah, and also there is all the perks like Mateo already mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me it was also like that. I have like this is my first experience working a hundred percent remotely. It's been crazy because I I have made so many great friends. Like one of my best friends, I met her here at Bytes Dev. We work together every day, and it's crazy how you can bond with people and like and meet people you could never imagine before. Because I mean, she's from Peru. I'm from Brazil. I would never met her like walking on the street here or like on a bus or anything like that. The traffic thing you mentioned, Mateo. Thank God I don't need to waste an hour and a half in the traffic every day anymore. Um, and also I would like to add something like remote work has gave me the great opportunity of patting my cats a few times during the day, <laughs> during work hours. They came, they lay on my lap, I can work, look at their pretty faces, feel chill all day, do my things. You can like do laundry real quick, come back to your tasks. I think it's a great opportunity because it helps us a lot with work-life balance. And I think this is so important today. Um, uh, and it's something a lot of people look for when they're looking for a job. Um, I would like to go back to the IT industry topic for a little. And uh, Mateo, since you're a recruiting manager, you're gonna have a lot to add to this question. And also Giancarlo as a developer, both like on each side of the question, but which tips would you give to the audience uh, so they can succeed in the hiring process? What do you think it's needed to succeed in the hiring process nowadays? I think that something very important that I would always suggest to all candidates is to know the company you're applying for, right? I think that reading about the company, getting getting to understand what is their culture. You know, we have companies that are like very formal companies. We have companies that are more casual, more relaxed. We have companies all between 
those two types. So it's important that you learn about the company. You go read, look them up, their web page, uh, LinkedIn, whatever you find about the company. Try to understand what they do and also try to recognize what is the culture that, that company has because you need to match that culture. You know, during the calls that you give, that you have with everyone in the company, you need to be able to match that culture. And uh, so that's why it's important to have all that information about the company. So I would start from there. Great. What about you, Giancarlo? What do you recommend? Well, I think that uh, for, you, you need you need experience for the for the position that you are applying to, but uh, I think that especially on buyers, it's more it's it's not more important, but it's it's, it's as equally as important as that you are uh, you match the culture like we mentioned, right? Because uh, I mean, the first time that I applied to the buyers, it was not successful, but I tried again. So I think I I think that you also need some persistence here because. You might fail the first time that you apply, and you, even if you go through all the process, you might not get called because there might not be a position in the areas that you are applying to. So, I think that you need, like, of course, you need the experience, but it's not the only thing that matters. Yeah, um, I I like how you you brought this into the conversation because to me it was the same thing. Like I I applied to one position, and um, unfortunately I wasn't selected. And then all of a sudden they called me for another interview that like for a, a position that they think that matched my profile, and. I'm super glad I haven't got selected for the first process. Nothing personal. I'm pretty sure they're great on that team too, but I, I ended up with a great team. I love what I'm doing here. And I think this is really important besides the cultural fit, because I mean, it would be different from company to company. Some companies might have a different way of dealing with the multicultural aspects and the like the delivery aspects and everything. Um, it's really um good to be aware of how that company works so you can see and if you can see yourself there the persistence is key because um i've heard from people that tried for over a year like applying to different positions and they got a a, a job offer here at bytes dev after to me it was uh, a lot faster i applied to the first position and less than a month um, after that i got hired for another position which was great but yeah, it depends on the positions available and depends on all of that. We are sending on a, on the chat a few links so you can see um, all of our available positions right now and apply for those. But yeah, I mean, um, it's it doesn't mean if you got rejected for a first um, um, interview here or for a first um, application that you you are not a fit for the company. It, it might be just that you're not the right fit for that position. So I'm really glad that you mentioned that. Another uh, thing is to add to that is something important that we do in our recruiting process is that we don't limit your process to one single project or one single uh, role. Okay, this includes technical profiles, but also non technical profiles right so uh, even if you apply to one specific job. Uh, we will take it into account, of course, because we receive that application, but if we find. Uh, your profile very fit for any other role that we have, we will for sure be contacting you for that role as well. And sometimes even some people are in the process and at the same time they are they are they are being asked about this other role that we have so that we try not to move them at the same time, but we try, okay, let's move in this one and then we have this this other one as a backup, you know? So this yeah. is something very important that we do in our recruiting process because we want to find not only like the best candidate for the job, but also the best job for each candidate. So that's really yeah. important. And I that, think that, that was is my experience. Good. That was my experience, by the way. I, I was I applied to one position, but then I got hired for another one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it happens to a lot of people. Uh, and I think it's great that Bytes Dev allows us to apply to as many positions as we, as we like. I mean, I could apply to all to them all. We have a perfect mix of um, in AI and human resources here uh, to try to um, match us with the right position, the right profile, the right fit for the company. So, yeah. Um, Mateo, I think I have a question here from someone. I, I know I'm like bringing the Q&A a little earlier, but it has a lot to do with what you said about the cultural fit and everything. What do you think are the three more important values at Bytes Dev? 
I think this is a great question. <laughs> yeah. So uh, first, I wanted to ask if you can hear me very well, because I read a comment there saying, like, maybe my microphone is not working very good. I can or hear can you hear well. Me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, okay. So three values, the most important ones. I think the first one could be flexibility. I mean, and it's not only a value, but also like kind of a benefit, you know, like being able to be flexible with the work that you're doing and being able to be flexible with the schedules and everything. I think that is something that that is that is very, very, very interesting about buyer's death. Um, another one would be um, goal oriented. OK, I believe that we all here at buyer's death work to, towards goals. OK, so uh, it's a fast changing industry. IT industry changes really fast, grows really fast. So our environment keeps changing all the time. But the important thing is that we always try to optimize our processes so that we are goal oriented uh, and we are achieving what we need to achieve. OK, if it's either um, for, for a project, for external client or for a process for internal client, we're very goal oriented. So we are always learning how to achieve those goals in different ways. So that's also something I appreciate a lot. And the other thing is the respect. I believe that here we all respect each other. Uh, I mean, buyers dev has been my only experience, but I'm really happy regarding that because I don't think we have like those ex those bad experiences of, um, of lack of respect at work environments. Uh, it can be respect related to your thoughts, your ideas, um, your background in terms of education, anything, anything. I mean, we value diversity a lot. So I think that respect, it's also one of our core values here. And I appreciate it a lot as well. So any idea is welcome. Any background is welcome because we we always appreciate the diversity and we know that well we can learn from each other so i really like that as well and i think we have lots more values but let's keep it to the three <laughs> that i just said but i don't think those are like the the most important ones i just think these are one of those yeah uh, to me the diversity aspect is Oh, amazing. Uh, and also the teamwork and collaboration thing you mentioned. We are all um, all working together here. Like we are all allowing each other to grow and share ideas and improve processes and do our things in a like a collaborative way and everything. And um, I like that you what you say about uh, diversity is because our, our hiring process is unbiased. We don't discriminate. We don't discriminate by any means at all. So everyone is welcome to apply to any of our positions. Um, and there might be positions for everyone, you know, like what I'm saying for each of um, in each individual's profile, there might be a position that would fit their profile here at Bytes Dev, which I like very much. Um, I mean, I think we can move to the Q&A section. I see there's a lot of Q uh, questions here being asked by our audience. I'm still going to need your help. Uh, can I add Mateo something? Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. Wrote, yeah, on top of what Mateo was saying about respect, I, since I had the experience of working to another remote companies, one thing that is not just respect to your ideas, but I also feel that you are an actual human being, because there are some other companies that you are just treated as another number, and that's mm -hmm. it, right? And here, I don't have this feeling. So I think that that's very important, especially for a remote company, because if you're just, it's it's very different. Uh, so I can say that. And and this is something that's very hard to, to come across remotely, right? Because uh, you don't have this, but I have this feeling here in Byers. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to like grab this cue. And um, since you're talking about us being treated as individuals and being valued instead of being just a number, um, a few questions that I've been seeing here in the Q&A uh, section, um, people are asking about courses and development and what kind of things we offer for uh, the development of our employees. And as Analu mentioned, uh, we have English courses for everyone that joins the company. My English has improved a lot since I joined the company. I never, I've worked in a few um, uh, bilingual projects before, but never like in English all the time. Um, of course, here at Bytes Dev, you might end up on a team that's um, like, 
from people that like only Spanish speakers or only Portuguese speakers. I don't think that's something that happens a lot because we are such a diverse place. Uh, my team has people from all over the place. So uh, since I don't speak Spanish, unfortunately, and some of my colleagues don't speak Portuguese, we always uh, uh, talk English uh, when we need to communicate. Um, of course, we don't need, not, not every position requires a advanced English level, we have positions that might require a less advanced English level, a upper intermediate English level. So if, you, if you're um, unsure of your English level, don't bother, apply. We are going to be evaluating that and finding a position that suits your needs. But again, regarding the courses, I feel there's a lot of opportunity for personal and professional development here at Vitus Dev. Um, we've been having, besides the English courses, some other courses. Um, such as um, for soft skills, for improving time management and accountability. And there's a lot of other different things we are um, offering, uh, we've been offered here that help us a lot with uh, our tasks and how to organize our lives. We had a, a, a great webinar for employees um, a few months ago about how to deal with overwhelm. So we always are, uh, we, we've always been offered those opportunities to improve our 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 social skills and even our hard skills and our soft skills all the time here. Um, but as that provides all the tools you need to be work here. Uh, so I think this is a great aspect also treating as individuals and being valued and like growing with the company. Our ideas are part of the company's uh, history. Uh, what we've been doing here, it's going to help the company and it's also helping us grow together. So I think that's lovely. I think let me see i'm gonna pick a question for each of you <laughs> okay yeah um uh, mateo i have someone here asking if we have a minimum or maximum age to work with us can you take that one yeah for sure so actually we don't have that uh what we're trying to look here is even for example if you're studying at university you know um you are a trainee you don't have experience or if you have lots of years of experience uh it all depends on the different roles that we have here okay mm -hmm. uh currently we don't have like practice or like internship programs but what we can offer is even for students we can offer a full-time job if they have the skills and the eagerness to um to do the job and learn about their role in their areas respectively so we don't have a limit on that and it all depends on the the technical skills that are needed for the role or the potential that we can see for that role in each candidate amazing i can i can attest to that because i work with a qa that's um in his third age and he is amazing i mean it, it's 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 clearly amazing that we have like this diversity here Great. Giancarlo, I said I was going to pick a question for you, and I have a great one is regarding technical interviews. So what kind of things do we look for in a candidate um, in the technical interview? You can tell like your experience with the technical interview so everyone knows how it's like. And Matteo, if you have something to add to that also, please. <laughs> sure. So um, I had two, actually I had three technical interviews. Uh, but uh, the first time uh, I didn't get past that, that phase. And on the second uh, time I had two for each for one project. So the technical interview is like half an hour. Usually it can be extended depending on the uh, questions, but usually the uh, manager is going to go over your CV and going to ask you questions and they can be anything, right? And they are going to be related uh, both to your experience, but also to the project that you are being considered for. So I I don't think you you need you have like anything that you need to prepare specifically for the technical review. On top of actually making sure that your strongest skills you have things on 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 the top of your head. But other than that, like they 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 are more interested in, in knowing how you can solve problems instead of if you remember the name of everything and this kind of stuff. So I, I don't think that you need to uh, do math in your head to, to be able to pass the technical interview because it's it's like this kind of stuff. As I said, and, and this is also something that 
uh, adds to, to what we we mentioned about the culture of the company itself because um, my experience at least was the I was a good fit for the, for the uh, for the position but also the manager wanted to know how I was as a person right because even if you are a good fit it might you might not be a good uh, fit uh, for the culture itself so that that was my impression from the interview anyway yeah the, the process really uh, I mean we have this basic seven step process that follows those guidelines but I think the process might may be a little different from for each position and for each uh, person here I see people asking about how long does the process take and it would depend to be honest on because some positions will require more than one technical interview some positions will not um, I would say an average is between two to four weeks but it could be faster it could be longer it depends um, to be honest on the position you're applying to um, Mateo, people are asking if they can uh, change the CV uh, after they upload it uh, on our uh, website. Can they do that? Yes, yes, you can. You can go to the applicant site, log in with your credentials, and you will go to your profile section. In your profile section, you will have lots of fields. So we always encourage that you keep that profile section updated because that's the information we have in our system. And that's the information we look up whenever we are searching through our database to find matches, right? So there you have the option to update your CV, change your, your expected salary or your current salary, change your phone number or your email, whatever you need so that we can have the most updated info. You can do it on the applicant site for sure. Amazing. I see people asking if we can, if they can apply, even if they don't, don't live in, in Latin America. What, what can we I say do about have it? some opportunities outside of Latin America. I can tell you that most of them are in Latin America. Uh, but we do have some opportunities uh, outside of Latin America, and it depends a lot on, on, on what opportunities we have at the moment. So I would just encourage for you to register, apply, and of course, whenever we have an opportunity that matches your profile, your location, your expectations, then for sure we will be contacting you. So that's also something very useful for you, for you to know, you know, like, you don't have to wait to apply for a specific position. You can always apply and be active in our database so that we can keep you there and we will be checking your profile all the time for any opportunity. Yeah, and also uh, Mateo mentioned that we should always keep our profiles updated there. Um, there's also a question that pops up a lot during those webinars, which is regarding the, the tests, the online assessments we have there, and if they are really important for the, for the, for the process. And yes, they are. I know uh, sometimes there might be a lot of tests, but you can you don't need to do them all in a day. You can like take your time, do the tests. Um, some tests are mandatory to all positions. You need to complete those. But this is a way of us evaluating uh, your profile, understanding the fit for uh, different positions here. So it's really important that you complete the tests in our uh, applicant site too. Besides getting, um, as Anna mentioned, it, the online tests are a part, one like one step of the hiring process here. So if you don't move past this uh, step, you cannot go any further. So I would recommend everyone to apply, create their accounts on the applicant side, update their information there, their resume, their experience, their, um, their skills, and also uh, complete the tests. I saw a question here. Just taking a second, guys, sorry, but I would really love to answer that one because they asked about bonding activities and what kind of things we do, like fun things here uh, inside the company. Uh, I would really like to mention that one because, uh, as, as I said, uh, working remote, uh, it might feel like we are apart and that we are not together, but I feel we can really bond and connect here. And I would say that a lot of that is because of teamwork and collaboration. We are always willing to help each other and be together here. Uh, but also we have a lot of fun um, engaging activities here for our employees. Uh, we are hosting a World Cup campaign with a lot of games, uh, things that everyone can join. I see Giancarlo smiling. We have a betting game on the matches results. We have some meetings during the month that are related to, like not related to work, 
no work related conversations there just to have fun and chat with your colleagues and get to know them better so i think um we have internal tournaments for our employees so i think we have a lot of different initiatives here that may that that helps us bond and be together even though we are apart geographically speaking <laughs> And for the World Cup and big events, we have lots of things. So right now we're like going through several types of events and contests and things. And I, I love that, that the environment is amazing right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, taking the advantage on the we are all working remote uh, from all over the world. I see a question here from Edgar, who asked if a manager will have their staff on site or remote. and all of our positions are 100% remote. It would always be like that. It has always been like that here. Because one thing that um, we believe in hiring the top 1% talent, regardless of where they live. So the only way to break those geographical barriers was going to remote work. That way I can bond and meet and work with people from all over the places. So yeah, all of our positions here are 100% remote. Um, let me see what's what else we have here. Well, we have a lot of questions. I love it. Um, okay, so yeah, people are asking uh, about the salary ranges here. I would like to take that one also because that would depend, to be honest. Um, it depends on your experience and your skills and the position you're applying to and the seniority level for that position. So a junior developer would not make the same salary as a, uh, a senior developer, or maybe they would if it's different technologies that like it, it all would depend. So that's why it's really important to go throughout the process. Our uh, economic proposal is usually the last step of the process. So go do your tests, apply for the positions, you're going to be asked your salary expectation, and we are going to take everything into consideration when making an offer. We're going to take your experience, your background, um, your skills, um, everything, uh, your test results, everything will be taken into consideration when making the offer. So I cannot give like like pinpoint a number on this because there is no right answer for this one since it would depend on the position and the, the employee. Um, let's see. Um, oh, people are asking if this webinar will be uploaded. Yes, we are live streaming on YouTube and this webinar will be, um, available to like on YouTube. So you can watch it later. If you missed anything, if you, uh, need to send it to a friend, you, someone, you know, might be interested in hiring in our hiring process and joining the company, you can send the link to them. Um, and I see a question here also that it's um, really, really uh, different from the ones I usually see here, but it's easy to answer, I think. Mateo, what does the 1% mean? Like, what is the 1% related, related to? <laughs> well, as everyone might have noticed, and also with the, with the video we were, we were seeing at the beginning, we have a very uh, complex selection process in terms of we, evaluate you in different dimensions okay so we evaluate a lot what is your technical expertise but also in other types of of assessments that you might find there in the in the online tests or in the technical interviews or during the the, the process may you may have another type of exercise or something like that so all of these if, uh, assessments are um, let us know who are like the top talent okay it doesn't mean that if you did a bad assessment, you will be rejected from the process because we take into account the whole thing, right? So we take account, uh, into account all of the scores that you had, all of the cultural fit, all the match that you got with the company and the role and everything. But we, we are sure that with all these steps and all these assessments that we have in our selection process, we are able to bring to the company the top talent that we have. And that's why we, we always repeat that we get the top 1% of the talent. Amazing. We have a few questions related to the cultural fit here. Uh, people apparently were interested in that. Uh, Matteo, you mentioned some of the values and Giancarlo, you did the same, but how would you describe the Baidas Dev cultural fit, the Baidas Dev culture? <laughs> I can leave this one to Giancarlo first, if you can give 
his perspective I, I can, from the client. Sure, sure, <laughs> I can go first. Um, the, the thing is, um, you can you are going to interact with various dev clients, and their culture is going to be a part of your culture as well. But the thing is, virus make sure that you are also part of virus itself. Like like I said, we have like this um, World Cup challenge going on, and that's like an amazing thing to bond. And we have one of the things that. Uh, I talked about what well, it was great when I joined that we have like a channel for each country and then you can join your country channel and then you can interact with people there uh, on other stuff, not just work related. So, and I also see like a lot of people helping each other. Uh, so people asking questions. And uh, one thing that we didn't mention yet, I really do like the mentoring pro program because I think that that's amazing. Um, so yeah, there there are a lot a lot of things that um, make the the culture great and make you feel part of the team. Great. Do you have anything to add, Matu? Maybe a little bit of the culture of BioStaff can be described with, like we always try to 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 be on top of of the new things, you know, like we're very modern, you know, like if we have something new, some new uh, world situation, like the World Cup or something like that, that we just want to to bring to the company, we will do it, you know, there is a lot of, of, um, of um, e events and experiences and contests and ways of communicating with other teams, knowing on other people, using technology, being modern, uh, and that's something that I think, I, I mean, I like, I like a lot, but I think that also can represent the culture of Pyrocep as well. Yeah. Uh, and another thing, like you mentioned that one thing that it's important for the hiring process, and I think that would also align with the cultural fit thing we are discussing. Um, Paulo Rogério has asked us, what are the best ways to know the company? What I would suggest mm -hmm. is Google it, go to our website, follow us on social media. Also, you should all follow us on social media because whenever we have an event like this, a webinar, we are going to post there. You're going to be uh, up to date to everything that's going on within the company. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to understand a company, research is needed. Like you need to go there and look for it online. You can, um, don't, don't feel um, ashamed or shy to ask questions to people who are interviewing you also, because that can also help you realize if it's the right position and the right fit for you. So if you're in the process with us and you have any questions, one thing that I would very much recommend, and I see some people asking about their um, application status also, uh, we have a live chat too on our applicant site. Uh, people will be answering you live. So if you have any questions regarding the company, the application process, anything, go there, uh, contact us. We are going to uh, do our best to answer your questions um, and to have you here with us in the future. <laughs> uh, I saved another one. Ooh, okay. This is more related to the, to the hiring process itself and what we are looking for in candidates. What kind of thing do you think it's needed in a resume, in a CV? What structure do you recommend for a CV? What kind of information should be there? What do you think, Matteo? Well, first of all, uh, I was reading a little bit about the Canva or the Word formats and which one you should use and which one you shouldn't. Honestly, we don't have a preferred structure, so feel free to use any structure of CV that you feel more comfortable with. But I think the most important points is to be able to demonstrate what is the real experience, what are the hands-on tasks that you have been doing in your previous jobs, right? I mean, not only putting like the title and that's it, but being able to put a description in every job you had at least the most, if you have a lot, because you're very senior, maybe you can choose the most recent ones, but it's important to have that level of detail because we, 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 um, we analyze CVs looking for this important 
uh, phrases or words or job titles that we're looking for. So it's important that you add this information, this type, this level of detail in your CV so that we can read it. We can understand what was the exact thing you were doing in that job so that we can match you with all the opportunities that match that, that job. Okay. If you don't have experience, because that's also important, if you're a trainee or a very junior profile, of course, that the education is going to be important. Uh, but also, it's always very useful to know what are your interests or what are your what are, what are your side education certifications, you know, like, okay, I studied psychology, but I have, I don't have experience, but I have a certification in human resources, I have a certification in talent, and I love talking to people, communicating, I have great communication skills, that would be really useful as well, because those are the keywords that we're also looking for those type of profiles, okay? So don't stress a lot about if I use Canva or Word or PowerPoint, I mean, I would say the most important thing is the information you're writing down. Great, thank you. Do you have anything to add to that, Giancarlo? Yeah, I was going to say that one thing that I found out recently, I used to have like a very um, common CV before. And then after a while, I changed to having like uh, a more modern one. And this this is what Mateo mentioned that you should add, not just add the title and uh, how many time you work on any, on any place, but you should also have like a brief paragraph describing what you did there. And also what you accomplished doing there, because uh, I have a feeling that this uh, is something that is being valued a lot by the managers when, when, when they're hiring. So that matches with Mateo, what Mateo said. Amazing. I have one here that it's it might be different for the three of us. So I think we only have a few minutes, but I think we can take one last one. Um, uh, I need to add, if we haven't got to answer your questions live here, I have some amazing people working working on the backstage here, typing answers. So thank you, Analu, Bri, and Huama. Uh, but I think we have time for one last one. For, for one more. And we if we didn't get to answer your question, please go to our applicant site, go to our live support. Uh, we are going to leave a contact us slide after uh, at the end of this. Please reach us so we can answer the questions. Uh, but how is the work routine here at Bytes Dev? I love that question <laughs> because it might be really different for all of us. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> I can go first. So my routine is very flexible, I would say. Uh, the thing is, um, my project is a nine hours one. This is something that's important to mention because you can have like projects that are not just eight, hour, eight hours, like you mentioned. Um, but there are some days that I start very early, like 7 a.m., working on my local time. And there are some days I start later. Uh, it really depends on um, the meetings you have and on in the work that you need to do. So. I would say that's very flexible. I do try to keep a routine, of course, um, but sometimes you cannot, especially if you are traveling or something like that. Um, so I would say that as long as you are showing up to the meetings and you are doing the work that you need to do, uh, everything else is very flexible. Of course, you need to check with your manager, both on the client and on, on buyer's app, but it's very flexible. Well, my routine is also very flexible as well. Uh, like I was same as Giancarlo, but also what I was telling you, it's how, it's how you organize your day and your life, right? So if I organize myself, okay, I'm gonna start working at nine because you know it's a good time and I can have nice breakfast and I don't have traffic and everything. I, I usually try to respect the schedule that I'm putting myself, but that doesn't mean that if one day I need something to be changed, I cannot do it. That's something important, right? Because with talking with your manager um, beforehand, you can always have this flexibility. But uh, my routine would be that, you know, like check in, first of all, my calendar, because we have like 
all our calendars are very connected and and I use lots of colors and notes in my calendar so that I can organize my day very well with that. So I, of course, I start my day checking my calendar, checking what do I have to do online and offline and well, go from there. I pause at the midday to have a break and the lunchtime and then I continue. But like I was telling you, we're flexible. It's a matter of how you organize your time and your routine, um, but also um, uh, it's good to have some type of structure personal structure for yourself. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, uh, of course, like traveling is something that it's a bonus when we're talking about working remotely, of course. Um, regarding like, I, I saw someone asking about this, so I'm just gonna add uh, a note, a side note to this. Uh, mo all of our positions are completely remote, so you probably wouldn't be required to travel. It might happen depending on the position. We had like some events and some, um, projects where we had to have managers meeting at some places and everything like that but you could work work from anywhere in the world so really so you can grab your laptop but is that will send you a laptop a headset everything you need to work you can put everything on a backpack and if you align everything with your manager you can work from anywhere you can work from the beach typing uh, of course we have these work schedule that it's usually eight hours um, a day uh, with one hour lunch break uh, from Monday to Friday. Uh, most of our positions are like that. But as Giancarlo said, and Matteo also said, like, if I want to start later today, I can just come to my manager and say, hey, uh, I need to start at nine and not at seven or like whatever, just adjust my routine. Of course, we have some moments where we all, we're all working together at the same time because we have meetings. Um, we use a lot of different tools to communicate. We use uh, Slack, Jira, we have Zoom meetings all the time here. So it's really good for us to, to have this flexibility here in a work routine. So it would like depend a lot more. Some positions might require a lot more meetings than others, um, but it would depend on everyone. But you can uh, be sure that since for all of us in different positions, the flexibility is an aspect that we noticed, it would be for everyone. Guys, I don't think we have any more time to answer questions. I'm so sorry I see that, that we still have a few, but we have uh, we had a great time here today. I love talking to all of you. Um, I want to thank everyone that uh, was here. Analu, I don't know if you're still here. If you want to come back to say, oh, she's here. Thank you I so much for here. the presentation. It was great. <laughs> um, it was everyone... amazing to see everyone talking here. Thank you so much, you guys, for being with us today. Thank you. Uh, as I said, if we are missing any questions, I know we are missing a fail because there were a lot of questions. Uh, please go to our applicant site, contact us. You can follow us on social media, ask us things there, go to the live site. We have uh, contact forms on our website. So there's a lot of ways to reach to us. Uh, you won't believe an answer. <laughs> so please um, contact us. And I hope to see you all in the future as BDEVers, as colleagues here at Bytes Dev. Thank you, uh, Matteo and Giancarlo, for joining and answering all the questions. It was really great. I want to thank you also, um, Brie and Huama in the backstage. I think that's it, guys. Bye. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.